and goal to our right for the Danbury Colonials. Four and seven on the year, an even 4.0 goals against average, a save percentage of 86.6. And Jack, you figure Fernandez, he's looking forward to getting a W in this game, but he's going to have to do the work to earn it. Yeah, absolutely, and he, he got the victory at Long Beach on the 22nd, so he, he's no stranger to these uh, this team in particular. I think he's played well over the last couple of starts that he's had. Really good stuff, but th this is a high-intensity game. You wonder if the delayed start affects either team in one direction. You're expecting the 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and all of a sudden the high school game runs late, and you kind of have to stay in your mojo. You have to stay warm, and sometimes it's tough to do that. It is. You know, I, I saw the guys playing uh, their little soccer kick around. He played a couple of shifts, but wasn't really too involved. I beg your pardon, a couple weekends ago. But uh, he wasn't himself, and now it's starting to look like he's gotten his game back. No, and not only did he not look like himself, he actually was replaced for the yeah. Top Prospects tournament as well by Brandon Cope. I know Colby wasn't happy about missing the tournament, but when you're injured, you're injured. There's only so much that you can do. And you have to be worried about, you know, or extra precautious about, you know, head injuries and, and concussions, especially nowadays. You want to make sure that you take good care of yourself. And it's frustrating because you want to be involved. You want to have that opportunity. If he continues to play like he is, he's going to have those opportunities come in his career. Just stay patient, young lad. <laughs> well, that's a great point. Especially man, just shift this into the Danbury zone. It's now Madsy turning at the blue line under pressure from Britt Brooks. Up along the wall. He manages to find Misha Mashar. Mashar is shot, gloved by Brelaud. Just a couple of weekends ago, really great game, really great weekend overall for him. Four goals in total. He's just finding the good sp spots of the ice, and that's really helped his game. And I think, you know, this third line. In front, they score! Misha Mashar to Kevin Remsen. People have gone off the goaltender. That one's a beautiful pass right there, tape to tape. So with the goal, Danbury takes the early 1-0 lead for Kevin Remsen. It is his 13th goal of the season. Garcia behind the net, intercepted by Remsen as this line gets a little more time out there. Wojciechowski sends it over the stick of Maverick Skeens, playing as a forward again. Now it's Skeens picking up the puck behind. That's what you want for Long Beach. You want to be able to get out of the zone quickly and then get back the other way. A shot off the point by Garcia misses high and wide. But yeah, you're right, it's, you send one in high. Coaches always say, you know, put your shot low. Well, you know, if you're from the blue line, you're the first one in, it's, you can generate a rebound, it's not gonna do much. Instead, if you go high as a long pass goes all the way down the ice, Skeen's trying to beat out the icing call, nearly did, but getting to the puck. Them out of that final third, you're gonna have a better chance of winning this hockey game. A faceoff win by O'Neill finds its way back to Garcia. Shot was blocked by Mashar. Now Misha Mishar picks up the loose puck and connects up ahead with Kevin Remsen. Remsen looking for a second, one-on-one -on -one into the zone. His shot saved by Brolard. The rebound comes out, Skeens scores! Maverick Skeens! 56 seconds remaining on the Long Beach power play. Unable to hold the line is Garcia. On top of him is Remsen, so Garcia goes D to D across for Jennings. Now Jennings passed too far for O'Neal. That's not what they wanted, icing is the call. And the faceoff will call them last. Back in mid-February, and th they're just cruising right now. It's it's exactly what you want if you're Coach C Kevin Cunningham. You have to pick up these two points. Oh, or Mika Koskinen, does, what, he wears something weird. Does he wear like 19 or something like that? I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but... Uh, and that, now, now I know what I got to look up later on today. Yeah, that, that's Edmonton's goalie. I think he wears 19. Meanwhile, shorthanded left go or check that Weber a shot. Goes all Nothing even gets close to Fernandez in a relatively quiet period for the Long Beach Sharks in their offensive opportunities. Penalty has expired, so we're back to five aside hockey. Long Beach with one shot on goal on that power play. As this is going to be Botwin off. Getting it as far as the Danbury Western Colonials logo in the neutral zone. There is a difference. Another clear by the Sharks, no icing on the play as Lefkoff chases after this. Samwise Gieta on top of him. Lefkoff falls down on the play, but right there is Maverick Skeens. Nice to have a fake defenseman out there. <laughs> <laughs> Skeens beginning the breakout. He starts off with Lefkoff, now for Remsen. Remsen up ahead for Misha Mishar. Remsen instead takes it back. Botwinoff manages to knock down the dumping attempt, and he'll start to break in as Donovan gives along for Weber. Dylan Weber into the zone one on four, taken down on the play, but play will continue. 70 seconds to go in the period. 
Ferraro. Off the glass, down deep, Cole Madsey will get there first. Will Space on the four check. Remsen, lost the puck in the corner. Good job by O'Neill to loosen it up. Now up ahead, flipping it through the zone was Misha Mishar. Valenti, too far for Hines, but off the stick of Madsey, so no icing on the play. Maverick Skeens will go back to retrieve. Skeens fakes one way, goes the other. He finds Barry. Madsey, Remsen, Skeens has Mishar open in the neutral zone. Picked his head up, but couldn't quite connect on the pass. Yeah, he's trying to avoid a haymaker there. Yeah, usually, eh, those don't feel well. You want oh. your head pointing in the right direction, especially over the blue line. 20 seconds to go in the period. Remsen reverses back Madsey. Danbury might be happy just to kill the rest of the time, but as I say that, Madsey wraps one around the boards. Too far from Mishar as Garcia goes D to D for Valenti. Now Hines, eight seconds to go, chipped in on goal. Not much of a forecheck shown by the Sharks. Three seconds remaining in the period. Get on that puck, and then he fires it away. It gets blocked, but that's what you want if you're Long Beach, those opportunities right there. Ostrowski and Matt Barnes are the only two players in double digits when it comes to goal scoring for the Long Beach Sharks as a clearing attempt goes off the skates of Maverick Skeens and stays down deep. Now Barnes has this go through his legs. Left cough, battling along the wall. Squirts out into the Danbury zone where it's collected by Kevin Remsen. Remsen gives along for Wojciechowski. Wojciechowski flips one that's batted down by Maverick Skeens. Nice hand eye shown there by the youngster. Glove down by Garcia. Garcia sends it to nobody in particular and Conklin will collect. Barry who just bangs it down deep. Skeens will chase after this. He'll outrace Conklin to the puck. Skeens tries cutting towards the front of the slot. Ferraro is able to break it up. But again, Long Beach after, you hit the nail on the head, Jack, after that first shift where Long Beach was controlling play for the first time as Mishar's shot gets blocked. It's been all Danbury since. Yeah, they, they found a way to just turn it back on here. Skeens has that puck knocked off his stick by Conklin. Not out of the zone. Good keep by Madsey. Dropped off Remsen. Remsen tries teeing up a shot. It's blocked. Skeens over skates. Conklin is there, and Mishar in support picks it up. Mishar, one-timer by Remsen. That's blocked before it ever got through. Nick Garcia wearing that on his legs. Now Remsen again, sending it around into the near side corner. Conklin has played a very long shift, trying to get the puck out of the zone. Unable to do so. Brooks, he whiffs as well. Now Brooks with another opportunity. Ferraro was down on the play, back up on the Kate on his feet. Danbury will get yet another change. This is the third shift. They, they got they got plenty of guys from the island. Amityville, Smithtown, mm -hmm. Sayville, Seaford, and this concert, Manorville. It's oh boy. There's plenty of them. <laughs> of course, in the middle of all that was Trevor Payne from Amarillo, Texas. And well, that is not the island. Shot from the point. Prozen didn't see it. He managed to go off of his blocker, and then Weber sends the rebound wide. Danbury dominating once again in the offensive zone. Dylan Weber in front for Donovan. Madsey pinching it from the point, keeps it alive. Now Weber gives a long left cough. Left cough. One timer, they score. Kevin Remsen, what a shot. And Sam Booz will replace him. So Booz comes into this game with a personal record of zero wins, one loss, a goals against average of four and a half. A save percentage of 82-9. Good to see Sam Booz, who is only dressed for, who, or rather, who's only appeared in two games so far. He only has 80 minutes to his credit. Good to see him find his way into the game, or into the net in this game. Yeah, he's backed up Alex Fernandez in, in both games that he's appeared in, and uh, he still won. Yeah. I just had to get something with the XFL. I didn't yeah. watch any XFL action today. I didn't either. Here's Sad. Kevin Remsen. His shot deflects or rather blocked. I thought that one was ramped out of play. Now Mishar turns around, lost possession. Ostrowski up ahead. Peripski canceled out by Lefkoff and Misha Mishar will collect. I gotta see how my uh, New York Guardians did. Well, they were winning at one point. I know it was a 17-14 game. All right. And then I saw a highlight that went against them. That's not good. You give a lot of credit to the XFL social media. I mean, th their meme game. It's absolutely fantastic, Zach. It's I, great. I, Jack, I cannot tell you how happy I am that I'm old enough that I never developed a mean game. Here's a two-on-one. Remsen, a shot save. Mishar, the rebound. Another save by Prozen, and he holds on. Danbury looking for number. Chance there, that third opportunity on the rebound. Prozen goes to his right, and a hard save there. Really, really nice job there for the young goaltender. 
just coming across and making a strong save against Berry. Another shot from the point. It's under Froth, and he takes a furtive look Oof. behind him. But it go in the right direction, I think. It, with some players around him, some stronger defenders, you know, he could, he could really be a sure-handed goaltender. Not the biggest guy in the world, but he, he looks confident in the net. He makes another good save there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Why not keep him busy? We have a delayed call coming up. It will go against Long Beach. Left off a shot. We have Space picks it up. Space, centering attempt, knocked down by Barry. Penalty box is empty, and we are back to five-a-side hockey with 100 seconds to go in the period. Here's Space behind the net. Has a stick lifted neatly by Cole Madsey. And Madsey up the wall, finds Donovan. Donovan flips it along further. Too far for Skeens. Off the stick of O'Neal. O'Neal met by Remsen. Remsen swings it down low. Skeens will be the first one there. Looking to get something going with Mashar. Instead gives it to Madsey. Now Mashar. Back for Skeens. He couldn't call the trigger. Remsen. A bit handcuffed. It went wide. Boy, if Maverick Skeens can take the one-timer there, it's an easy goal. Yeah, absolutely. He just couldn't pull the trigger. The puck was hopping a little bit on him, and it made it tough. Oh, look out. Remsen, too. Oh, Remsen already has found the back of the net twice. Now Mashar a shot. That goes wide. A shooting gallery for Danbury as the Sharks are standing around watching all this. Now Lefkoff a shot. Saved by Prozin. Mashar gives back. For Lefkoff, Lefkoff has it knocked off his stick, and now Will Space kicks it up ahead a bit further. Cole Madsey is there. He sends it back into the Sharks' end. 35 seconds to go in the second period. There for Long Beach, just keeping everything to the perimeter. No passing lanes through the middle, and there you go. Danbury's power play shut down once again in, the, in this matchup. Well, Long Beach has killed off the penalty. We're back to five-a-side hockey. Here's Maverick Skeens. A backhand shot never made its way through. Valenti. Stripped from behind by Misha Mashar. Mashar gives down low Skeens. Skeens looking for Mashar and finds him. Top of the circle, a shot. Mashar found the goal, but Brazen makes the save. Now Valenti off the boards, not out of the zone. Good keep by Madzi. Off the stick of Skeens, it goes behind the net. Remsen gets there first, gives to Mashar. Mashar looking for an option. Thinks about a Ooh. lacrosse move. It falls off of his stick, and then Remsen, a weak shot, goes off the side of the cage. Centering attempt for Mashar, intercepted by Vasquez. Vasquez from the red line will send it in on goal. Booz will stop it, looking for an option. Didn't see anything he liked up ahead, so he swings it behind the net for Madsey, and Remsen sees it deflect off of his skates, but into Long Beach possession. Boy, Misha Mashar trying to Ooh. get a little interesting back there. Well, you think with the score line the way it is, you see a little bit of space. Maybe you try to get fancy, if anything, for the highlight reel to... You know, post on your Instagram and Snapchat and all those. A 9-1 game. Somebody grab that puck. Yeah. I'm sure Franklin will like it. Well, I it. shouldn't say offensive value. I said his his game relies a lot more on the defensive side of things. Really a big fan of Franklin Berry. Just the way that he approaches the game of hockey. He knows his strengths. He relies on them. And finally. Bottom of their screen. Tapping their sticks on the boards. Franklin Berry, like you said, he's a defensive defenseman. You're not expecting offense out of him. And yet... Every now and yeah. then. My Bound to come your way. My favorite line for a defensive defenseman like that is from the 2000 Stanley Cup Finals between the New Jersey Devils and the Dallas Stars. The Devils eventually win game one by a 7-3 to three margin, but one of the players who scored in that game, Ken Danico, who had all of 21 goals, I believe, mm -hmm. over his 20-plus year NHL career, Danico scores from the point. Gary Thorne, the play-by-play -play announcer, goes, it must be a leap year. <laughs> and here we are on leap, leap day. day. Wow, that was incredible. And that puck is still sitting up in 201, Zach, so we really need to go. Granite City versus St. Louis, they're done. New England versus New England, they're done. That's got to be confusing. Not the same team. No, no, New England Knights against the New England Stars. And those two teams are actually battling for a playoff spot. Atlanta Capitals versus the Mid-City Junior Stars down in Texas. That's done. Left off a shot saved by Prozen. Texas Brahmas against the Texas Roadrunners. That one's done. Here's Wojciechowski trying to get a little, or check that Mashar trying to get a little fancy. And then Remsen getting everything on a slap shot. He's going to make those saves for you. All right. So we are not the last game yet. We're in the running. We got a shot. So the new Ulm Steel and the Alexandria Blizzard, they've gone to a final, the Blizzard winning 4-3. to three. New Ulm was one of the teams that defeated Danbury at the tournament out in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. The North Iowa Bulls defeated the Peoria Mustangs 4-2. to.
That's where I learned. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Either way, 50 seconds gone by on the Long Beach power play. It is their third of the evening. They're 0 for 2 so far with three shots on goal. At the point, Jennings finds Garcia. Garcia, a drive into the glove of Booze, and he holds on. That's the right idea for Long Beach. They just need to continue to do that. Valenti spinning away from the pressure. Conklin's shot gets blocked. Remsen doesn't know where it is. His teammate Kyle McEnany does, and McEnany gets it out. Conklin gets it back into the zone, delayed off sides, and so Cole Madsey will chip it along. And seeing enough of this is Franklin Berry. He'll send it all the way down. 35 to go in the power play. Remsen on the four check, meets with Valenti. Now Barnes in support. The owner of 14 goals so far this season. He'll stop, take a look, and finds Valenti. Everybody's happy. Now Brelaud gets pulled, what, maybe uh, 10 minutes into the game? Yep. He's on, he only saw 10 shots. Brazen has faced 35 shots. He's played a full game, essentially. Well, you could do something like what Danbury does. Start a player and then, you know, be able to take him out halfway through. The we are not, but yeah, he doesn't seem to be too concerned yeah, about it, so. Not, he's not working on it. Nah. Why not? You know what? It's a nice dent. Sharp angle attempt saved by Booz. He'll reach out and grab the rebound, but again. Home games, final games of the season here on March 7th and 8th. Those games are huge. Tomorrow's game, big as well. You have to put everything Moving forward for this team, you have to get the offense clicking as much as you can because you know the challenge of this season is only going to grow immensely with playoffs looming. Well, not only does the challenge grow, but you know with the limited number of games remaining in the season, you and I spoke about this during the intermission, but we were going through all the different scenarios. Ooh. Danbury basically needs... We need four to get to two. If, you're, if you want any shot at first place, a, a clean sweep over the next five games... It is very important, and it, it hurts you so bad losing to Skylands. You figure, hey, we got five games left, three against Long Beach, but it's also so tight you're not sure what the two teams on top of you right now in the division in front of you are going to do. So you, you have to put the destiny in your own hands. You can't let anything else be the defining factor here. And you take care of business today. You win the first of five, and, and then you have to just keep moving forward and playing to the next day, one game at a time, obviously. But if you want home ice advantage in the first round of the playoffs, you need to win at least four, I believe, Zach. And that, you know, that makes sense. And just to make things even more complicated, Elmira and Skylands still have a game against each yeah. other. Elmira has three games left, Myra. And there's no guarantee that they play Skylands either. They could be playing Danbury in the first round and if, now, if everything goes in the Colonials' way. And now keep in mind, when it comes to the Frazier Cup playoffs, all rounds are best of three. And the higher seed, they have game one, they have game three if necessary. Or, and here's the little star on everything, if an alternate arrangement can come up. So, you know, one of these teams... Oh, hold on a second, two on one <laughs> developing here as it's Vasquez with Guieta. Vasquez, bad angle, swallowed up by Booz, and he'll hold on. But Those three assists, why not? Oh, Finds okay. the primary there. <laughs> nice little pass to Lefkoff, and Lefkoff says, how do you do? And here we go with the touchdown, the three-point conversion, and a and safety. Yes. Here I was getting excited, toss another field goal on there, mm -hmm. but... Well, if you look at the traditional football rules... You mean, NFL. Old, you mean old football, nice old hip check. Old school. Thrown by Madsey, as upended on the play was Nick Vasquez. Now Remsen, his shot is blocked. You know, us older folk who watch the <laughs> NFL. <laughs> yes, you 22-year-olds. <laughs> Here's Westendorf, back up to Barry. Now Madsey, he'll wind and fire and deflect it out of play by Vasquez. And you know, that's the kind of player I want on my team. Absolutely, it's the individual efforts that the coach looks to. Okay, we're down by this margin. Who, who's still going to try hard? Who's still going to work their butt off? And, and he's one of those guys who, regardless of the score, is going to give his all. And, and it's those individual efforts that you kind of circle and you say, hey, you know, it wasn't the result that we wanted tonight, but you still gave it your all. You still fought. Exactly, and you know, for any scouts or coaches who are watching this, they're going to notice that as well. As this game comes to an end, the day.